Now that we have power back, welcome back to some more Stormworks. I'm Stormrunner Gaming, and today we're going to be jumping into Friday's update here on those instrument panels with a tutorial on how to set up the instrument panels for your vehicle. And these instrument panels are pretty cool because they allow you to throw a lot of dials or other controllable buttons onto your vehicle here. And I've set up this one with a couple different engine values as well as fuel and altitude meter and some speed as well as our parking brake control is run through here so i'm going to throw this back to the workshop and the one big thing about this is this is actually controlled through some composite values here so we do have to run these through some micro controllers here so we have to use that microcontroller but i'm going to hold off for a second jumping into the microcontroller editor because the first thing you have to choose here is what each instrument is going to show or what it's going to be controlling because of course you can change the type here of what you're going to be putting on here it can be a blank none so you don't get anything in that for the square or we can choose to put a dial in there, indicator, gauge, button, a couple different types of buttons, and these seven segments down here as well. So for right now, I'm going to create a brand new one with a button for those parking brakes. We're also going to have that fuel gauge I left on there. And we're going to put two more things in here. I'm going to put an indicator, and I'm going to do another dial on here. And then once we have that done, once we've chosen the four things we want on here, we're basically going to go to that microcontroller editor and we're going to create a new microcontroller. And of course we're going to need to make this a little bit bigger to fix everything and give it a brand new name. So I'm just going to name mine Instrument Panel 2. And for the logic, we're going to fill up all six nodes here. And one of the things, because this is a composite thing here, and we're going to be sending and receiving values here, we need to change two of these to an input and output here for our system. And we also have one button in here as well, so this is going to be our parking brakes button. We also have numbers for everything else. Let's change all three of those to numbers. And one of them is going to be that fuel. The next one is going to be the engine temperature. I know I do have an engine temperature on the other one, but we just needed another value there. And our third one is actually going to be an on-off because we have that indicator light there. Now this is where it gets a little bit more difficult. I'm going to make a quick symbol here of the instrument panel with the four different buttons on here. And that's the symbol I've been using for all four of my controllers here. My microcontrollers to control them. Now we're going to jump into some logic. And we're going to put input and output here for a second there. And put our four different values here. And actually, since our parking brakes is an output and not an input, we're going to have to go back and change our parking brakes to an output here instead of an input. Because this value here coming through the composite actually has to output over to our parking brakes. So we're actually going to use a composite read to send the parking brake values to there. And we're going to put our output down there as well. So the next thing we're going to be doing is reading a couple different values into the composite here so that it will control everything on that instrument panel out there. And we're just going to be setting each value through these different things here. So basically we're writing everything to the microcontroller here and it's going to send it over through composite to that instrument panel on your dashboard of the vehicle. And of course, we want to change the channels that these are written to. So we're going to change the indicator to 2, the engine temperature to 3, and the fuel to 4. Now we're going to have to remember all of these numbers here, and I'm going to quickly write that in a notepad. But basically, you have to remember the different channels you're writing to because you change the channel on 
the instrument panel to what you've controlled here. So whatever the indicator, whatever number channel that is going to, you change the indicator to on your instrument panel. So now that is all done, all you have to do is connect that input to there and it's going to basically create a loop where it keeps all of these recreating themselves basically. It's going to constantly refresh itself here. And if you don't have anything that has to output a value, you do not need this input here. To say I have all four numerical values or outputs for on off writes, then we do not need an input from this. So you would only need five things here instead of six. So let's save this up as our instrument. Panel two. And we're gonna go out and put it on our vehicle here. So we're actually going to take out this one right here and replace it with that instrument panel two. So we can just place this anywhere on the vehicle. And the first thing we're going to do is connect that input and output to the opposite of the instrument panel there. But we're also going to have to connect up a little bit of data here, connecting up the output to all of those breaks there and the input of this indicator over here. So basically, if we have a button here or something, I'm basically just going to set up a toggle button to put in this. So say you have a trunk button right here and somebody opens the trunk before you leave somewhere. You can connect this up and then connect that up to the indicator there. And that indicator will basically say trunk open. So now all we need to do is connect that one up. And we're going to take the engine temperature again as well as the fuel gauge here as well. So you guys remember when I said to write down those four values there for the things you are writing into here or outputting here? This is why we have done this because the channel out here is what we're going to change to send it back over to that microprocessor. And of course, if you have something like this microcontroller here, excuse me, I said microprocessor earlier. If you have something like this microcontroller here that is getting all four values, all you need to do is connect up a composite to it. You don't need to write back out. So it doesn't matter what you put these channel numbers as. You can change it to that, but it's not gonna change anything. But this one will change it because the parking brakes needs to be written out for one. And since that one is writing out, we need to change all of these out to different numbers as well. Because the fuel is coming in as our fourth one, indicators is coming in as our number two, and this dial right here for our engine temperature is coming in as our number three. So we just change that channel number and that's a little weird it's a little difficult to get that but we have that done now so let's see if that is working properly now so we're getting engine temperature correctly and fuel correctly as well the indicator is not on at the moment and currently we have engaged our parking brakes and this button does not have power. I forgot to give it power. So let me do that real quick and I'll be right back. All right, so now that that trunk button has power or whatever you want to indicate, we can click that button. As you can see, that indicator is going off. I forgot to actually go in there and change the indicator's name. So we're just gonna call it our fake trunk open. That's some great English. I don't know if that's how you spell trunk or not. Anyway, so as we put that in now, of course, through that menu there on top of the instrument panel, that is where you change the names you see when you hover over any of these things. So you can see uh, which value means anything and you can see our fake trunk is open. Our parking brakes are engaged. Now they are disengaged. And now the fake trunk is closed because that indicator is not on. As you can see, the engine temperature is flying up pretty quickly. And this is happening because 
just like a regular dial you would put on any of your vehicles, we have a min and max value for that dial. So you can change it to a min of zero and a max of about 150. I believe is around where the engine will burst into a ball of flames. As well, the fuel is zero to 150 at the moment, so we can change that to 700 because that is the size of a large one. And I believe that is everything we need for one of these. Of course, if you guys do want to make it a little bit more compact, you can make one microcontroller to control multiple of these and put it under your vehicle, in the trunk of the vehicle, or somewhere else. I, for my intensive purposes here, I created two just to make it a little bit simpler on myself and for you guys out there learning the process here. But of course, if you do have any questions on this system here, there is the community discord or the comments down below and hopefully I can get back to you on either of those as quickly as I can. But anyways, that is where I will be ending the video here. So of course, if you guys like this, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to stay up with Stormworks and more of my content. But I've never been great. Goodbye, so people need me and I need to go.